direct object pronouns, easily known as DOPs, direct object pronouns. To use a direct object pronoun in a sentence, it's like saying it or them. Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever noticed I've not ever taught you the word for it? Like, I like it. I don't like it. Or, those are some nice shirts. I think I'll buy them. That's because we had to wait till this chapter to do, to do that. So, here it is. Um, how do you say it in a sentence? Or how do you say them in a sentence? So, we're talking about example sentences. In English, it would be something to the effect of, where is the pizza? I ate it. I mean, you don't want to always say, like, where's the pizza? I ate the pizza. Who ate the cereal? I ate the cereal. You know, you want to say things more fluidly, so you want to say it or them sometimes. I like those shoes. Do you want to buy them? Instead of, do you want to buy the shoes? So it's easy to throw in a pronoun here and there. Here are your direct object pronouns. Lo and la, of course, are masculine, masculine singular and feminine singular. Los, that should be los and las. Hold on a second. Got to make a correction here. All right, I'll start to slide over again. Ta-da! The direct object pronouns are lo, la, los, and las. Lo and la, of course, are singular. Los and las are plural. Lo is masculine. La is feminine. Los is masculine. Las is feminine. All right? So the two sentences I had in English, the example sentence conversations I had on the previous slide are now translated into Spanish. ¿Dónde está la pizza? La comí. Me gustan esos zapatos. Esos zapatos. We're talking about, that's a demonstrative adjective that we learned in our last chapter. ¿Los quieres comprar? Me gustan esos zapatos. ¿Los quieres comprar? Another way to say this same sentence, ¿Quieres comprarlos? So in this sentence here, Please pay attention to where the los is. Los is in the front before the verbs, before the, the principal verb, right? And here it's attached to the infinitive verb. So there are two ways you can use direct object pronouns. One before the conjugated verb here. Two attached to the infinitive verb. And honestly, if you're focused on conversation for right now, just pick one of those ways and do it. If you're focused on wanting to speak Spanish and you don't know which one to do, but you need to get started somehow, pick either this way or that way and do it. I picked that way. That's when I was doing Spanish 201 in college. I picked attaching it to the infinitive verb. It, was, it seemed like less mental effort on my part for me, but pick whatever works best for you. Okay, to use a DOP, first check the gender of the direct object, not the gender of the subject, unless the subject is a direct object, then see if it's singular or plural. And remember, lo is masculine singular, la is feminine singular, los is masculine plural, and las is feminine plural. Okay, practicamos. Next step, those sheets I passed out to you guys, have those handy, and I'm going to bring them up on the computer. Okay, direct object pronouns. In other words, a direct object pronoun tells who or what receives the action of the verb. Direct objects may represent people or things. To avoid repeating a direct object noun, you can replace it with a direct object pronoun. Martin echó la carta ayer. Carta is the direct object noun. Carta is letter. So the sentence is like saying, 
did Martin send out the letter yesterday? And the answer to that is no, la hecho hoy, which means no, he sent it out today. La is the direct object pronoun. It replaces the word carta. Here are the direct object pronouns you have already used. Lo, la, los, and las. Circle the direct object um, circle the direct object noun in each sentence, then write the direct object pronoun that replaces the circled words. Follow the model. So, Paquito pasó la aspiradora ayer. All right, so aspiradora, I'm going to underline you, but you circle. All right. Aspiradora is the direct object noun. Are we going to replace that with lo or la? La, very good. We will replace that with la. Next, Juancho buscó los patines. What did he busco? <laughs> that means, what did he did look for? <laughs> he looked for los patines. He looked for los patines. So, are we going to replace patines with lo, la, los, or las? Los, muy bien. Tú llenaste el tanque del coche. That means you filled up the gas tank of the car. El tanque. Tú llenaste el tanque del coche. What is the direct object noun? You filled the tank of the car. Okay, the direct object noun is tanque, el tanque. That's the direct object noun. So what would the direct object pronoun be? Lo. Eso. All right. Yo envié las tarjetas a la tía. I sent the cards to the aunt, like greeting cards to your aunt and your aunt so what's the direct object what was sent did you send the aunt or send the cards? the cards you send the cards so cards is the direct object noun las tarjetas las tarjetas so we need to replace tarjetas with a direct object pronoun what would that be Las, muy bien. Ustedes sacaron los libros de la biblioteca. You guys checked out the books from the library. What is the direct object noun? What did we check out? Good, los libros. Los libros. So what would the direct object pronoun be? Los. Ella cerró la estación de servicio. She closed the service station. Okay. So... Let's look at the uh, the phrase here, la estación de servicio, the station of service. So did she close the station or did she close the service? The station, good. So the direct object noun is going to be estación, which means your direct object pronoun is what? La, muy bien. Excelente. 
Okay, look at the sentences from exercise A. Replace the direct object noun you circle with the pronoun that corresponds to it. Follow the model. Margarita lo cobró. Okay, so Paquito, number one, number one. Juancho, number two, number two. Tu, tu, three, and three. So that's how that's going to work. <coughs> Paquito, Paquito, we're going to say la paso ayer. We're taking la from right there. Paquito la paso ayer. Juancho los busco looked for them tu lo llenaste yo las envié a la tía ustedes los Sacaron de la biblioteca. Ella la cerró. All right. So part B, all of these here are very short sentences of what occurs here in part A. All right. Make sure you've got those answers. Okay. Moving on. Direct object pronouns continued. Circle the direct object noun in each question. Then answer each question by using a direct object pronoun in your answer. Use the verbs given. Follow the model. <coughs> Él cobró el cheque el martes pasado. Did he cash the check last Tuesday? Sí, lo cobró el martes pasado. Yes, he exchanged it or ch uh, cast it, um, charged it, is what it would literally be, last Tuesday. Ella pasó la aspiradora ayer. We're going to say, si sí, la pasó, and then ayer is included. Very important to include the accent marks with preterite verbs because if you if you didn't include the accent mark there, it's not la paso, but rather la paso, which means like that puts it in the yo form, present tense. So it's important to say la paso ayer, which means it's it's, it's a phrase pasar la aspiradora means to vacuum. Right? I mean, you can also say aspirar, but some people say pasar la aspiradora, which means to pass the vacuum cleaner. So, to say, saying la paso means she passed it, but if you say la paso, it means I pass it. And it changes the meaning. That's why it's important to include accent marks. Ellos arreglaron el cuarto esta semana. Did they clean up their room or arrange their room this week no no lo arreglaron esta semana we're going to say no lo arreglaron because the direct object is el cuarto el cuarto whoa ¿Quién echó la carta en el buzón? Who put the letter in the mailbox? Anita la echó en el buzón.
quién, quién envió las tarjetas de cumpleaños. Billy las envió. Ellas sacaron los libros de la biblioteca. Sí, los sacaron. Jenny y Miguel cerraron la estación de servicio. No, no lo cerraron. Oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry. La cerraron. Él lavó los platos anoche. Sí, los lavó. The direct object pronoun is placed before the conjugated verbs. When an infinitive is present, the pronoun may come before the conjugated verb or attach to the infinitive. Lo tengo que hacer. I have to do it. Or tengo que hacerlo. I have to do it. They're translated the same way. But the direct object pronoun can occur in different places. Like the word order can change, but it's still translated the same way in English. All right, so we're going to practice attaching the direct object pronoun to the infinitive verb. Las cartas las vamos a echar hoy. Vamos a echarlas. El palo de golf. <laughs> That's interesting. That's what we say in Costa Rica. Palo means stick. But most people don't say golf stick. Tengo que, lo tengo que comprar, and now becomes, tengo que comprarlo. Los vas a usar esta tarde. Voy a usarlos. La mesa la voy a poner hoy. Hey, you know what? Let's change that to vas. Because it's not really asking a question, it's making a statement. Los vas a usar esta tarde. Now it would become vas a usarlos. This becomes voy a ponerla. Los periódicos. Los voy a separar esta noche. Voy a separarlos. El dentista lo tengo que visitar hoy. Tengo que visitarlo.
All right, we got that. All right, irregular preterite verbs. The preterite forms of ser and ir are the same. Yo fui, tú fuiste, usted fue, él fue, ella fue. Nosotros fuimos, vosotros fuisteis. Ustedes fueron, ellos fueron, ellas fueron. Usually the context of the verb is what makes the meaning clear. Mi doctora fue la doctora Serrano. My doctor was Dr. Serrano. El año pasado fue muy difícil. Last year was very difficult. Yo fui a la farmacia. I went to the pharmacy. If you see the preposition a following one of these verb forms, the verb is ir, meaning, and, and the meaning is went. Circle the conjugated verb in parentheses. I will underline, and you circle. Whoops. Ayer, ayer means yesterday, ayer fue un día muy interesante. <coughs> Primero, mi familia y yo fuimos al parque zoológico. Mis padres fueron a ver los monos y mis hermanos y yo fuimos a comer un helado. Fueron, because the subject is third person singular, Fuimos because with the inclusion of yo, the subject is now second, uh, sorry, first person plural. Fue delicioso. It was delicious. A las cinco, at five o'clock, todos los otros Fuimos a comer en un restaurante argentino. At five o'clock, all of us went to eat in an, an Argentine restaurant. La comida fue fantástica. The food was fantastic. Y yo fui a la casa muy contenta. And I went to the house or went home very happy. A donde fuiste ayer? Where did you go yesterday? Un abrazo, Victoria. A hug, Victoria. All right. <coughs> Let's continue on to the next page. Irregular preterite verbs, ser and ir, continued. Write the correct form of the verb in parentheses, follow the model. Rafael y Hernando no fueron al consultorio ayer. Rafael and Hernando did not go to the consul yesterday. Okay. Anoche yo fui al concierto. Luego, Marcela y yo fuimos a cobrar un cheque. Went to cash a check. All right. La noche fue divertida. The night was fun. Y tú, ¿a dónde fuiste? Y tú, ¿a dónde fuiste? <coughs> La tarde fue aburrida. Ellos fueron a un concierto en el parque. El plato principal fue bistec y papas. 
Now look here. Even though bistec y papas is plural, we're talking about el plato principal. El plato is singular. Now that includes bistec y papas, but we're talking about el plato. That's why we say el plato fue. Nosotras fuimos a la playa. Okay, irregular preterite verbs, hacer, tener, estar, poder. All of these are irregular. <coughs> you can see all of their conjugations and spellings there. Well, estar and poder are not conjugated. They're not conjugated for you. Hmm. Well, <coughs> let me see something. Oh, they're conjugated on the next page. Okay. All right. I will underline, you will circle. Nosotros tuvimos que ir al concierto. ¿Qué hizo tu papá? <coughs> ¿Qué hizo tu papá? Él tuvo que enviar la carta. Una carta. ¿Qué hizo tu mamá? Tuvo que devolver un libro. ¿Y Laura? Ah, ¿Y tú, Laura? ¿Qué hiciste? En la noche, yo tuve que cuidar a mi hermanito. All right, last page. Irregular preterite verbs hacer, tener, estar, poder, continued. Like the verbs hacer and tener, the verbs estar and poder are also irregular in the preterite. Unlike regular preterite verbs, hacer, tener, estar, and poder do not have accent marks on their preterite forms. Here are the preterite forms of estar and poder. Yo estuve, tú estuviste, usted el ella estuvo, nosotros estuvimos, Ustedes, ellos, ellas estuvieron. Yo pude. Tú pudiste. Usted, él, ella pudo. Nosotros pudimos. Ustedes, ellos, ellas pudieron. Write the missing endings of the preterite forms of estar and poder in the sentences below. Anoche yo estuve en el parque por una hora. Estuve. Mi amigo Pablo no pudo venir. Pablo y su papá estuvieron en la oficina del doctor. Pablo no pudo ir a la escuela. <coughs> Él estuvo enfermo por tres días. There we go. <laughs> Tú estuviste enfermo también, ¿no? 
Complete the sentences below with the correct preterite form of the verb in parentheses. Follow the model. El fin de semana pasado. Yo estuve en casa. Mi hermano Tito tuvo que hacer una tarjeta para nuestro tío Julio. Tito casi no pudo terminarla a tiempo. Después echó la tarjeta al buzón y por la noche nosotros hicimos la cena. ¿Dónde estuvieron ustedes el fin de semana? All right, felicidades, muy bien hecho.